I'm Chiquita Mullins-Lee, Arts Learning Coordinator for the Ohio Arts Council. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to Ohio's 13th Annual Poetry Out Loud State Finals. I am so pleased to present our 11 state finalists competing for the opportunity to represent Ohio at the national competition in Washington, D.C. These students come from all across the state and have put in many hours of practice to get to this point. Each of them competed at their high schools and then at one of our six regional semifinals and earned the honor of representing their school and their region at the state finals today. And here they are. The state finals will consist of three rounds. Each student will recite one poem in each of the first two rounds. The top six highest scoring students from the first two rounds will recite a third poem in the final round. Contest results will be determined by cumulative scoring from all three rounds. The contestants will be scored in six categories, physical presence, voice and articulation, dramatic appropriateness, evidence of understanding, overall performance, and accuracy. For this formidable test, I would like to introduce our intelligent and distinguished judges, Rose Smith, <laughs> Steve Abbott, Nancy Kangas, my name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Words do not work, and when they do not, other words might. She arrived at the country mansion in a silver limousine. She'd sent out invitations and everything. I am not resigned to the shutting away of loving hearts in the hard ground. I met a traveler from an antique land who said that two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. My heart bleeds because of baby bear not finding mama bear. And it bleeds to the tips of my fingers like I painted my nails crimson. Oh, star of strength. I see thee stand and smile upon my pain. And now he drives, gliding toward the net. A glass wand of autumn light breaks over the backboard. Suppose I said the word springtime, and I wrote the words King Salmon on a piece of paper and mailed it to you. Late August, given heavy rain and sun, for a full week, the blackberries would ripen. Can I eat what you give me? I have not earned it. <sighs> Must I think of everything as earned? Now we will announce the names of the six students with the highest scores from rounds one and two combined. Noah Martin, Caroline Delaney, Dylan Abel, Alex Flood, Anna Colley, Magnus Sabo. The night Max wore his wolf suit made him infamous. Bred the child star never sent to bed. Middle school, Max started drinking. Not in my house, his mother begged. No, no, no wild thing. Max reminded her, who paid for this condo? Who bought her meds? Freshman year, Max raved, roared his terrible roar, rolled, and almost wound up in a warehouse, dead. Where, oh, where do the wild things go? To rehab in high school, to college on residual book sales. 
Max kept his head down, laughed at drunken frat boys. Bro, let the wild rumpus start, Max said, no thanks, and volunteered for the Peace Corps instead. Two years in Kenya, one in Belarus. The president thought Max might be of some use. Max moved to Washington, appointed at the State Department, a cultural attache. One important day, Max wore his wolf gray suit, then drove home well past rush hour in a freak snowstorm. Max drove on the deserted beltway, thought it his throne. Yes, Max belted. This is where the wild things roam. A woman in the shape of a monster. A monster in the shape of a woman. The skies are full of them. A woman in the snow among the clocks and instruments or measuring the ground with poles. In her 98 years to discover eight comets. She whom the moon ruled like us, levitating into the night sky, riding those polished lenses. Galaxies of women there doing penance for impetuousness, ribs chilled in those spaces of the mind. And I, virile, precise, and absolutely certain from the mad webs of Uranusborg, encountering the Nova, every impulse of light exploding from the core as life flies out of us, Tycho whispering at last, let me not seem to have lived in vain. What we see, we see, and seeing is changing. The light that shrivels a mountain and leaves a man alive. Heartbeat of the pulsar, heart sweating through my body. The radio impulse pouring in from Taurus. I am bombarded yet. I stand. I have been standing all my life in the direct path of a battery of signals, the most accurately transmitted, most untranslatable language in the universe. I am a galactic cloud so deep, so involuted that a light wave could take 15 years to travel through me and has taken. I am an instrument in the shape of a woman trying to translate pulsations into images for the relief of the body and the reconstruction of the mind. The sky is cloudy, yellowed by the smoke. For view, there are the houses opposite, cutting the sky with one long line of wall, like solid fog. Far as the eye can stretch, monotony of surface and of form without a break to hang a guess upon. No bird can make a shadow as it flies, for all is shadow, as in ways or hung by thickest canvas, where the golden rays are clothed in hemp. 
no figure lingering pauses to feed the hunger of the eye or rest a little on the lap of life. All hurry on and look upon the ground or glance unmarking at the passers-by. The wheels are hurrying too. Cabs, carriages, all closed in multiplied identity. The world seems one huge prison house and court where men are punished at the slightest cost with lowest rate of color, warmth, and joy. Trade, trade versus art. Brain, brain versus heart. Oh, the earthiness of these hard-hearted times when clinking dollars and jingling dimes drown all the finer music of the soul. Life as an octopus with but this creed that all the world was made to serve his greed. Trade has spread out his mighty myriad claw and drawn into his foul, polluted maw the brightest and the best. Well nigh has he drained dry the sacred fount of truth. And if, forsooth, he has left yet some struggling streams from it to go, he has contaminated so their flow that truth, scarce is it true. Poor art, with struggling gasp, lies strangled, dying in his mighty grasp. He locks his grimy fingers about her snowy throat so tender. Is there no power to rescue her, protect, defend her? Shall art be left to perish? Shall all the images her shrines cherish be left to this iconoclast, to vulgar trade? Oh, that mankind had less of brain and more of heart. Oh, that the world had less of trade and more of art. Then would there be less grinding down the poor. Then would men learn to love each other more. For trade stalks like a giant through the land, bearing aloft the rich in his high hand, while down beneath his mighty ponderous tread, he crushes those who cry for daily bread. If ever two were one, then surely we. If ever man were loved by wife, then thee. If ever wife was happy in a man, compare with me, ye women, if you can. I prize thy love more than whole mines of gold or all the riches that the East doth hold. My love is such rivers cannot quench, nor aught but love from thee give recompense. Thy love is such, I can no way repay. The heavens reward thee manifold, I pray. Then while we live in love, let's so persever, that when we live no more, we may live ever. In the desert, I saw a creature, naked, bestial, who, squatting upon the ground, held his heart in his hands and ate of it. I said, is it good, friend? It is bitter. 
bitter, he said. But I like it because it is bitter, because it is my heart. Okay, the results are in, and we have uh, our, our three winners. Our third place winner is Magnus Sabo, Upper Arlington High School. I said, is it good, friend? Our second place winner is Anna Colley, Lima Central Catholic High School. My love is such rivers cannot quench. The first place prize, the winner of Ohio's 13th annual Poetry Out Loud competition, and our new Poetry Out Loud state champion is Caroline Delaney, Chaminade Juliad Catholic High School. In her 98 years to discover eight comets, we wish you the best as you and a chaperone travel to Washington, D.C. to represent Ohio at the Poetry Out Loud National Finals. <laughs>